Although we don't usually build fences around our wilderness reserves on land, the idea is very clear. You have a clearly defined patch of land where the uses are restricted. Flora and fauna are protected and compliance with the rules are monitored. But there are often problems with this element of compliance. It's quite obvious, but at least we are talking about an area of land where it's very clear who has sovereignty to regulate and to enforce. It's a state in whose territory we have this wilderness reserve. This can be very different in the oceans. There's a whale sanctuary in the Southern Ocean, but this is very different from the traditional nature reserves on land. Nobody has sovereignty over this part of the ocean. And while commercial whaling is prohibited for those states who are member to the International Convention on the Regulation of Whaling, other users are not necessarily prohibited and non-members could still engage in whaling. So who can control what happens in this far off place in the ocean? And would there be a court to sanction a flag state of a vessel that engages in illegal whaling? The answer is uh, very far from obvious, although the International Court of Justice has already dealt with the legality of the Japanese scientific whaling program when Australia successfully claimed that the program breached international law. In any case, we have to look very closely in which maritime zone and what kind of marine protected area is established, what users should be excluded, and who should be bound by it. We tend to be very concerned with certain species when we consider, we consider worth protecting, like whales, like seals, turtles, or polar bears. While species-specific measures like whale sanctuaries, um, like restrictions on international trade, they can assist with protecting species, but this sectoral approach can only be part of a more comprehensive scheme. International regulation has come a long way since the beginning of the uh, 20th century that demonstrates a change in the mindset of what humans consider valuable. And this is something we need to reflect upon. What do we think is worth protecting? First, only those species considered useful were addressed in international agreements, while the non-useful or the harmful could be killed. This was, for example, the case for large birds uh, of prey that were considered harmful for agriculture. Later on, the protection of habitat was a focus of attention because species could not be protected in isolation. And sexual agreements like the uh, prohibition of trade added um, to the protection of species but could not prevent loss if habitats were not protected. The 1970s was also the time of the establishment of large nature reserves and parks fostered by international conventions like the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, or the UNESCO World Heritage Conventions. Yet another step further in the conservation of biological diversity uh, was a convention on biological diversity that moved away from species or habitat towards a comprehensive understanding of biological wealth based upon an intrinsic value of diversity. So this convention was adopted in 1992. It enjoys universal membership and defines defines biological diversity as follows. Biological diversity means the variability among living organisms from all sources, including inter alia, terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems, and the ecological complexes of which they are part. This includes diversity within species, between species, and of ecosystems. And you see, this goes a lot further than protecting birds useful for agriculture uh, in the 1930s. The convention is applicable to the marine environment as far as national jurisdiction reaches. So what our main problem is, how do we protect marine biological diversity beyond areas of national jurisdiction? At the moment, there is no international treaty addressing, for example, marine protected areas on the high seas. Such an instrument, however, is at the early preparatory stage. And although currently not even diplomats who have been closely following the process for a decade, have an idea how this instrument will look like in the end, uh, uh, it's at least one step forward to create, to, to make it possible that there are marine protected areas on the high seas. If we take protecting biodiversity in the ocean seriously, we need to take an integrated approach. This means, as a matter of principle, that no issues should be excluded if biodiversity is to be protected effectively. This would also include a biodiversity-oriented sustainable fisheries management and the establishment of protected areas. And I can tell you already that states will be very reluctant to integrate rules on the conservation of biological diversity and fisheries law because they are regarded as two completely distinct fields of law. It's 
Obviously, they're closely related on a factual basis, but it will be difficult to come uh, to make states agree on integrated solutions. To change the current approach to the conservation of biological diversity in the oceans, it would be necessary to establish regulations on integrated approaches and, again, to have strong institutions that can uh, monitor and enforce compliance. Marine protected, uh, protected areas are, exist on land, in coastal zones like the Wadden Sea, but also in the seas. The Australian Great Barrier Reef is an example for a marine park. Many sites are considered particularly valuable uh, that have been turned into such marine reserves. Marine protected areas are one tool to protect biological diversity in land or water, but from the perspective of effective governance, it's hard to say how we can define an MPA. There is no commonly agreed definition and there is no catalogue of criteria what must be prohibited in such an uh, area. So they can serve a variety of purposes and uh, connected to this they can include or exclude different users. While one MPA in the territorial sea may allow for snorkeling and low-scale fishing, other MPAs may restrict the fishing gear to certain uh, equipment, while others may go further and have strict no-take zones and um, even prohibit navigation. On the high seas, currently MPAs are very rare, and if they are established, it's a good step forward because it shows willingness to act, but they are very limited in scope. So uh, the uh, Regional Convention for the Northeast Atlantic, OSPA, has been praised for the establishment of a network of high seas MPAs. However, they rather resemble paper parks. This means they look good in paper, but it's quite hard to effectively restrict certain users. Members of a treaty can, between themselves, could prohibit fishing, uh, they could prohibit navigation, but the current regimes we have don't do that. And what you cannot do is to impose restrictions on other states. You cannot force third states to uh, refrain from fishing in the high seas. There's a freedom of fishing and states can comply with that. So even uh, if uh, two states have a perfect MPA treaty restricting fishing, the other 190 states of the world could go and fish and profit. Maybe if, if, uh, if you're having a successful MPA and stocks are uh, recovering, another state could just come and fish and take all your fish that you've protected. A way forward, of course, would be a global instrument with broad participation and ideally this would cooperate cooperation with the, for example, also the International Seabed Authority if you think about a marine protected area that has the water column and uh, the seabed. At the moment, we don't have such an instrument. One crucial question that's also relevant for politicians and lawyers is how do we know which areas are particularly worth protecting? Here we know we need a process that connects political decision making with science. We would need to define the purpose of an MPA and uh, this could be the protection of a field with hydrothermal vents because of their unique biodiversity or uh, protect a spawning site of a fish stock. But to be able to do this, we would need the science. We would need to know where these hotspots are. And also, what kind of network would you need? Would it be sufficient to have isolated MPAs? Or would that not serve the purpose? Because uh, in between, if you have migrating species, they would not be protected. So a small, a single small size MPA in an area where we lack knowledge about what we are actually protecting will most likely be just another paper park. For the new implementing agreement that I have just mentioned, uh, uh, that could be a step forward. Ever since the Convention on Biological Diversity has been adopted in 1992, there have been discussions on how to address the establishment of MPAs uh, and access and benefit sharing to genetic resources in areas beyond national jurisdiction. The Convention itself does not address, address this question because it's deliberately limited in scope. The Convention on the Law of the Sea was to be left unaffected by this new agreement and enjoys explicit preference over the Biological Diversity Convention. However, the Law of the Sea Convention was adopted in 1982. It doesn't mention the term biological diversity. It doesn't mention the term genetic resources. It doesn't explicitly address the establishment of marine protected areas. So at that time, in 1982, states had different interests and a different focus. They focused on straits, on warships, on resources on the continental shelf, but not on biodiversity. Now, uh, with this uh, new uh, implementing uh, agreement, uh, it's the idea to have uh, something that can address these issues where hopefully 
many states will become a party. While for a long time after the adoption of the uh, Law of the Sea Convention, it seemed too difficult to incorporate new ideas and new challenges into that instrument, now the time seemed to have uh, changed. A working group of states representatives has been working on questions on how to protect marine biological diversity for a decade. They have identified four crucial issues to be addressed to better protect biodiversity in areas beyond national jurisdiction. And this new instrument is supposed to be an implementing agreement to the Law of the Sea Convention. So it's deliberately incorporated into this treaty of 1982. These four issues are the establishment of MPAs, access and benefit sharing concerning genetic resources, environmental impact assessment, and a transfer of technology. So will this new agreement be legally binding anytime soon? No, not at all. International law is very, very slow. The UN General Assembly has decided to establish a preparatory commission to make some suggestions. At the end of this process, however, is not the agreement, which will then be binding, but it will, the Gen General Assembly will decide whether or not it wants a diplomatic conference to deal with a new agreement. And only at the end of this diplomatic conference will there be a text of a treaty to be adopted. Once it's adopted, states can sign and ratify it. If a certain number of ratifications is reached, the treaty enters into force, but only for those states who have ratified, not for the others. This means it's a very good thing to have discussions on a new implementing agreement. It's good that they have left the stage of informal working groups, but uh, it will take many years before the end of the process is reached, and we cannot know yet how the implementing agreement will look like and whether the um, instruments are weak or strong and how many states will commit to it in the end. To summarize this chapter, we have learned that ocean biodiversity must be protected by integrating issues such as fisheries management that have been viewed separately. There's no legal definition for marine protected area, although it's good that states start to agree. On high seas MPAs, they are still very limited with regard to effective protection. A new implementing agreement to the Law of the Sea Convention on Biological Diversity is supposed to address the question of MPAs on the high seas and other important issues, but it will take many years before the text of the new agreement will be adopted.